Hello and welcome back to Locana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're going to be taking a look at the top eight deck lists for the Metaborn Gaming's Kids Case Tournament. Now just to cover myself from a YouTube terms and conditions uh, perspective, my content while I always aim for it to be family friendly is never directly aimed at kids. So if you are underage watching my content I would always advise uh, getting the permission of a guardian and if you yourself are, are a parent or guardian of a minor I would always check through my content yourself before showing it to younger viewers but yes I saw a tweet a couple of weeks ago could have been longer than that uh, from someone called TDD collects who mentioned that they were planning on running a kids only tournament for Lorcana which I think is a really great idea um, I've been quite vocal that I'm I'm I, I'm hopeful that one day uh, official play gets its uh, gets its own sort of junior division and different age brackets. I have no doubt whatsoever that there is a very good reason why that hasn't happened already. I don't know what it is, um, but it's it's such a basic thing. And the people making Lorcana are all TCG experts in and of themselves. It's not going to be a novel idea to them. So I'm sure it's just a lot of legal loopholes that need to be um, tightened up, especially because it's courtesy of Disney. So I am very hopeful that one day it will come but yeah I think this is a really good cause and when I saw this um, tweet I said by all means let me know when this happens and I'd love to put a spotlight on the deck lists and I got an email um, a couple of days ago from TDD Collects which I will read out to you now. Hi Baker I'm TDD Collects I'm one of the people who put together this kids only tournament here in central Florida. My buddy and I put together a brand new organization that goes by the name of Metaborn Gaming. We're not a storefront or shop ourselves simply a pop-up style organization. The goal of Metaborn Gaming is to go around from shop to shop and host different types of events in different areas in order to reach Lorcana communities all over Florida. We're starting with kids tournaments because we have a bunch of kids in our local scene and we want to give them a safe place to play in a competitive environment that makes them feel a larger chance of winning. Listed below are the deck lists in order from 1st to 8th for the kids only tournament we hosted at a local shop, the Flow Go Shop in Central Florida. I didn't list names of the kids to respect the privacy of both them and their parents. Good decision. I don't know if they need it or not, but I'll list our socials below as well. And of course, the socials for the organisers will be linked down in the uh, in the description. Absolutely go, them, go and show them some support. And if you are a, um, an LGS or a store in Florida, then reach out and uh, maybe these maybe you could work together and um, get some more special events going. But yeah, I was very keen to cover this. It's the next generation of Lorcada players. So I thought it'd be interesting to see uh, sort of where they're at already. So we're going to be looking at those, but also today is going to be the return of Disney Trivia, which I did on the channel quite a while back, and it was proved to be very popular. A lot of people were like, yeah, I'd love to see this again, um, and I just haven't had a video that has been short enough that I felt like I could um, add this on top. And because we're only going through eight deck lists and I've got no other admin or business to discuss, there's no there's no yapping that needs to be done. I thought we would do some more Disney quiz. So we're going to do that straight away. I'll read out five questions and the answers will be right at the very end. Of course, timestamps time stamps in the description. If you are not bothered by Disney trivia and you want to get straight to the deck list, that is fair enough. But let's do some Disney trivia. Okay, question one. In his final battle with Captain Hook... What does Peter Pan promise he will not do? In his final battle with Captain Hook, what does Peter Pan promise he will not do? Question at two, in 101 Dalmatians, what colour is Perdita's collar? No cheating by going to get your legendary version of her out. So one more time, in 101 Dalmatians, what colour is Perdita's collar? Okay, this one associated with a franchise that isn't in Lorcana yet. I hope they get it eventually. According to the song Mine, Mine, Mine in Pocahontas, why can't Governor Ratcliffe dig? One more time. According to the song Mine, Mine, Mine in Pocahontas, why can't Governor Ratcliffe dig? Question four. In Mulan, what character says to Captain Shang, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty? In Mulan, what character says to Captain Shang, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. And final question from another film that isn't in Lorcana, but I'm hoping. Which character from Oliver and Company wears a Mickey Mouse watch? That's which character from Oliver and Company wears a Mickey Mouse watch? 
Those are your five questions. We'll take a look at the answers at the end. A very quick shout out to the channel sponsors. Card Market, if you're looking to buy Lorcana singles at competitive prices, check out Card Market. But for now, let's take a look at the top eight deck lists. Right, we've got quite a varied set of top eight deck lists here to go through, which I'm very excited to do. But in first place, uh, it cannot be denied, uh, the Squirrel reigns supreme, whether it be the younger generation, the older generation, Bucky be good. We've got some Emerald Steel discard up in here, and it looks pretty standard meta. We've got four copies of Bucky, of course, with Ward and the ability to make our opponent discard a card every time we play a Floodborne. In that vein, we have lots of Floodborns. We've got uh, the most notable new addition is the new Diablo, Three cost, uninkable, two, two. Quest for one, evasive. You shift him by discarding an action card and his ability circle far and wide. During each opponent's turn, whenever they draw a card while this character is exerted, you may draw a card, which is so incredibly powerful. If they draw for turn, off of beast, friends on the other side, rabbit, whatever it is, uh, we be drawing extra cards, which is fantastic. We're also running four copies of the one drop, which not only scalps out the opponent's hand and gets his information, but opens up a really powerful line of turn one Diablo, turn two Bucky, and then you on turn two, you can immediately discard an action card, of which we have a fair few, to immediately shift the Diablo and start making our opponent discard cards from turn two. And then we can immediately either quest with Diablo, or maybe he sings uh, Let the Storm Rage On, or strength, uh, strength for a Raging Fire, to exert himself so that we're immediately drawing extra cards, which is just wild. Uh, in terms of more Floodborns, we've got Aladdin, the Brave Rescuer, just, and again, another three-cost Floodborn that we can put down really early to make our opponent um, start discarding and the ability is not irrelevant whenever this character quest you can banish chosen items get an item to get rid of those lucky dimes those fishbone quills things like that we are running a 4-4 pegasus line which the one drop is really good with evasive if they don't have evasive answers then he's going to cheat out quite a lot of lore and it opens up turn one pegasus turn two bucky turn three um floodborne pegasus who is also evasive on a 3-3 but when you play this pe uh, pegasus all your other characters gain evasive at the start of your next turn which is a really nice extra ability to have We've also got 4-4 Robin Hood line. Again, turn one Robin Hood, turn two Bucky, turn three shift. And this five drop Robin Hood, or three if you're shifting, is really strong. Three six stat line. Doesn't like to see Madame Medusa. Doesn't mind seeing Along Came Zeus. Questing for two. Two great abilities. When you banish a character in a challenge, you gain two lore. And if he's banished in a challenge, you can draw a card. So just an incredibly strong card. And not to mention we're running um, two copies of Grab Your Swords and two copies of Along Came Zeus for uh, Grab Your Swords. Obviously does spread damage and Along Came Zeus is more often than not spot removal so these are early lines to get these songs online we've got other floodborns here four copies of tinkerbell no shift target but she's still a great mid-range drop immediately putting one damage on all the opposing cards and when you um, banish a character in a challenge you do two more so tinkerbell is strong as ever we've got three copies of the beast tragic hero who does have a lot of um there's a lot of cards that can take the beast out medusa zeus or even just doing chip damage onto him to stop you drawing but if they don't have those answers then you're going to draw a heck of a lot of cards and sometimes it's just about, about making them play those answers on the beast. Um, so yeah, a really s a strong set of Floodborns here. We've got two copies of Baboom as a great um, great way to offset things like r opposing Robin Hoods, Borum Sensation Cinderella's, all those aggro sort of cards. Uh, Let the Storm Rage on, a Strength of a Raging Fire, great cards. And of course, um, I missed the four copies of Ursula Deceiver of all, three cost Ingable, two, three. And when she sings a song, you sing it again for free and then put that song at the bottom of your deck. So singing Strength or Let the Storm Rage on twice is so incredible powerful especially because storm rage on lets you draw a card so yeah a meta deck through and through um yeah huge congratulations to the first place winner in second place, we have got some gas, some Ruby Amethyst, pure aggro. So in the one drop slot, we've got we've got tons of one drops here. We've got four Shonenbox followers who can obviously, we when he quests, we can banish him to draw a card, which is great for just keeping our resources up. Not to mention we're running a um, Madame Mim engine of the four snakes and the four foxes that require a character to be bounced back to your hand to be able to stick on the field. So we want one drops anyway. But these Shonenbox followers, the two strength is nice. It checks some things um, and again just helps us draw more cards and thin our deck a little bit more magic broom similar when we play another character when he's already on the board we can banish him to draw a card so again just a way of helping us draw more cards make sure we've got resources make sure we're thinning and finding the pieces that we need we're running four copies of pascal who gains evasive when there's another character on board so that's going to help us deal with opposing one drop pegasus 
But really, this is just an aggro deck, so we're hoping that we're just getting out a ton of lore early game with Pascal, and even mid-game, we, we can just extend that bit more, because we've got so many cheap characters. And we're running four copies of Maleficent Biding Her Time, who's just a one-cost uninkable 1-1, one, one, but quest for two. So really, really aggressive, and especially playing into these slower decks, if you come across, most Sapphire decks tend to be very um, slow, no matter what they're paired with, so you can really make an early lead with Maleficent. Of course, I mentioned the Madame Mim engine, four copies of Kuzgo, another great two-drop, and again, draws a card when he's banished to help us retain resources we've also got three copies of pinocchio star attraction two cost uninkable one one quest for three so just all the aggro and then three copies of the simba um scrappy cub who is exactly the same stat line so if against this deck if you don't open with characters my goodness me are they gonna gas on you we've got four copies of lefou here which is gonna help re-ready characters to keep them safe so that we can hopefully quest with them again the next turn we've got four copies of the madam in fox as i said to help us give us a bit more board control three copies of maleficent for some more cards draw we've got four stylish surfer mini again all the gas um they, they've got to, you got they got to answer so much here and on top of that we're going to make them have evasive answers four rabbit for the draw four uh, goat for the for the law four copies of the new super goof rush and when he challenges a character gain two law so again we are just aggro and if they've got a few exerted characters because they've been challenging our smaller guys super goof's going to come onto the board and just help us close that gap and four copies of queen's castle which of course is just a great term for play especially because we've got loads of cheap characters we should be able to move quite a few put like in um if you've got say five six ink and you've already got the castle on board you play say you played the castle on four on five you could reasonably play like an, uh, two characters and then move them to both to the queen's castle both one drops and then maybe you've got another character already on board that you can then move to castle so you can fill up this castle really quickly so this looks really scary this is so much gas um again if you haven't got the early characters you're really going to struggle against this so huge congratulations to the finalist one more Ruby Amethyst list to look at going on into the top eight. Much more of a mid-range control tempo sort of build. Um, our one drops, we've got four one threes, two Olaf and two Minnie Mouse. We've got four Shernabog. Sounds good to me and I like having this one three stat line along with these two Crab. You often get a bit more gas out of them. We've got our four Snake, four Fox, uh, the two Grab I just said, the four Goat, the four Rabbit. We are running the two copies of Flynn Rider, giving us that really nice curve of Flynn Rider into uh, three drop the Sea Sue, who gets an extra strength for each card in your opponent's hand, and four willpower is nice, questing for two is nice, so yeah, this line of Flynn into Sisu into Castle is just asking so much of decks to be able to answer, so this could really help you run away with the game. We're also seeing two copies of the Dolores Madrigal, who we saw pop up in a tournament list a couple of weeks ago. Four cost inkable, three, three quest for two, and Magical Informant. When you play this character, if an opponent has an exerted character in play, you may draw a card, which is, like, that's pretty... That's a pretty reasonable condition to be able to meet a lot of the time, I think. Um, a lot of the time, you'd rather have the rabbit, but it's nice to have the, the draw card on an inkable. And again, the fact that she quests for two is not insignificant. She's one of only two characters in this deck that's actually questing for two. Uh, the four Maui, of course, for some board control. Madame Medusa, of course, the boss is here. Four Brawl to answer things like Flavisham and Diablo. Four friends on the other side for the draw. We've got three copies of Beeking Undisputed, who I'm enjoying more and more as, as, the, um, as the season progresses. I love loved this card when I first reviewed it. I just thought it, like, Ursula Deceiver was too prominent, and it was just always going to be, end up getting mulliganed back into our hand, and on top of be prepared, it was going to be too many. But green decks don't really play, um, emerald decks don't really play Ursula Deceiver on two. Um, they wait kind of till turn six, which is good, because they're baiting at, they're waiting for the be prepared turn. Uh, but it often means that you do end up getting this Beeking Undisputed off, and of course, we've got lots of sync things that can sing it. Rabbit, Goat, Dolores, um, Maui, um, Medusa, so, so love to see it. Four copies of Be Prepared, and of course, four copies of that Queen's Castle. So again, another really great... Oh, oh and two copies of Arthur. I completely missed the Wizard's Apprentice. Three cost, uninkable. One, three. Quest for one. And student, whenever this character quests, you may return another chosen character of yours to your hand to gain two lore. Yeah, I like Arthur. I'm not sure if... Um, because there's just... you you got to expect a lot of brawl in format a lot of the time um, and some of the red deck ruby decks are running the daring visitor sisu and of course it's fodder for the uh, for the Floodborn Sisu. Uh, you can say the same about Flynn, but you often get your value off Flynn a bit sooner. I don't know, I think it's fine. Like, again, if you put this down on three, if they can't answer it straight away, then that is a nice little lore bump that you can make if you on four go like Rabbit and then return it with Arthur and 
like again in this instance it sounds like they're probably developing more of a board state than you but if you're able to equalize with a b prep or a b king um or, or, or a medusa or and uh but yeah love it love to see it congratulations to them all right, going back to top four, we have some Amber Amethyst, which a lot of it looks very similar to the Atlanta winning deck because we are seeing the Baditas, we are seeing the Fairy Godmothers, we are not seeing any Mufasas in this list. Um, Non-character cards, we've got three Queen's Castle, one Lantern, and th uh, three friends on the other side. Um, I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to play Mufasa in this list. I think it's perfectly reasonable to have, want to have a, non a higher non-character count. Um... Three friends, three... I mean, Castle's always good. I think that one Lantern is probably uh, less than I would probably like to see, but it worked out for this person uh, on top four. And hey, at the end of the day, um, if you're playing cards that you enjoy, then you're having fun, then you're winning at Lorcana. So you'd love to see it. So let's take a look through. We've got three copies of Lilo making a wish to be a nice aggro character. We're also running a 4-4 Pluto line. The one cost being an uninkable and um, the ability good dog, exert. Pay one less ink for the next character you play this turn. So if you get that down on one, then um, as long as they don't remove it, then on turn two, you could be playing a three drop, such as Arthur or Doc or Maleficent, which is really nice. And if they don't have an answer to that Pluto, again, if they're a slower deck um, that can't really answer it, then on turn three, then you can quite viably play a five cost, which could be the Maleficent Mistress of All Evil or the Fairy Godmother, or maybe you're just playing a couple of cheaper characters. And of course, the, um, the Floodborne version being a three eight with bodyguard the three makes me sad because he does just get banished to medusa but outside of medusa this is a big bulky boy and he's going to protect all these like high questing characters like the lilo um we've got a three two stitch line in here and of course if we get the rockstar stitch then there's lots of targets to be adoring fans loads of characters that are two cost or less i'd like to see this at a higher count to be honest i think if you're going to play this engine make it more like i think hiring your odds of hitting it sounds good so i'd, I'd like to see this at a three myself uh Two copies of Shona Box followers for some more draw. Four Pascal, another evasive character. Um, to, to, again, cheat out law. Three Olaf. Uh, we've got three copies of the Pooh Pirate Captain Piglet. Big fan of this card. When you've got two or more other characters in play, he gets plus two law. So, again, we should have nice wide boards a lot of the time. Just one copy of the Simba Bodyguard to be another character to protect these um, uh, high questing characters. Three Doc, as I said earlier, to reduce character costs. We're seeing three Arthur in here as well to give us law bumps and protect characters. Two Maleficent. Three copies of of lucky four cost uninkable two three quest for one and two abilities good as new exert to reveal the top three cards of your deck you may put each character card with cost two or less into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order so again lots of targets for this um, and the second ability puppy love whenever this character quests if you have four or more other characters in play your other characters get plus one lore and if put if if you put down Lucky and they can't answer him, um, and you've already got a wide board, then this can just race you to game. Just do, like in some instances, doubling their their law. Um, yeah, this, this can be a really aggressive turn to just reach for game. And we're seeing three copies of the legendary Fairy Godmother. No shift target in this deck, but whenever this character quests, your characters gain pl uh, Challenger three. And when this character is banished in a challenge, return this card to your hand, which is a really really strong ability. Um, I would probably like to see. A shift target for her but again if we're able to put her down on turn three like turn one pluto turn two doc turn three fairy godmother then that's pretty strong and i don't see them answering that straight away so you'll have to see it the two maleficent mistresses of all evil whenever she quests we can draw a card and when we, when we draw a card we can move a damage counter from one of our from chosen character to chosen opposing character which can be nice and cute and of course three copies of the Padita here when you play this character and whenever she quests you can play a character with to cost two or less from your discard for free which again loads of targets here and of course we can bring out the stitch to set up the shift the pluto to set up the shift just so so many options available here the Stitch, as I said, we've got four copies of Yzma. When you play this character, shuffle another chosen character into their player's deck. That player draws two cards, so it can be removal if we need, really need it, or just help us draw more cards. The two Pluto, as I said, three copies of Chernabog, who is one less, um, who is one ink cheaper for each character in our discard. And again, we should have a lot of characters in our discard nice and early. And, and again, we shuffle them all back in when we play him, so very nice. Two bare necessities to get rid of those non-character cards. I missed that before, and then I already said the other non-character card so yeah it looks a lot of fun um if i if i was being ultra critique 
then I would probably... I'm, these Plutos, I'm not a huge... I think you definitely want to raise your lucky odds if you want to play this lucky engine. Um, so I'd probably max out the stitches. And I'd probably cut down on a couple of these higher characters. Like, by all means, like, play the ones that you enjoy. Um, and that are a lot of fun. Um, I think probably one or two Chernobog would probably be fine. Um, and if you really like this Pluto, then by all means, uh, play the Determined Defender, but... I'm not sure how necessary he is, but hey, you made top four and this, this person could be sitting there thinking it was absolutely necessary for me to get top four, in which case I stand corrected. But nonetheless, really fun looking deck and huge congratulations to you. All right, our other top four deck, we've got some Ruby Sapphire Control. Pretty cookie cut stuff going on here. We are an Ice Block variant. Three copies of the Ice Block. Exerts, chosen character gets minus one strength this turn, which is really nice just to help you with your math for challenging. Maybe you can challenge in and they're not taking you out in, or just doing less damage to you in general, which is nice. But of course, we also put more things into range. We've got four copies of Brawl to banish characters with two strength or less. So we can get this a bit more online. We've got three copies of Medusa. Medusa, who wants three strength or less, which already is a large amount of the, the card pool, but we make even more of the card pool fit Madame Medusa's range. We've got the three copies of the Floodborn Sisu, who banishes all opposing characters of two strength or less. That's another the way that we can manipulate it. So yeah, this ice block going to put in a lot of work, not to mention that it's an item which is going to um, synergize really nice with Tamatoa, who gets extra lore from items and replenishes items when we play him. And of course, uh, Sapphire's most broken card, Flavisham, who is a draw engine, is a draw machine. We've got four copies of Porpsicle, nice and standard. We've got those two Lucky Dime to help us really close out matches and make insane lore jumps to, um, in the mid to late part of the game. I say mid because we ramp in, so it could be earlier than you might expect. Um, running four copies of the Fishbone Quill for the Accelerated Ramp. Also two copies of that Great Stone Dragon, who is raising in popularity, allowing you to exert to put a character from your discard into your Inkwell face down and exerted. So slower than Fishbone Quill, but in the mid to late part of the game, Great Stone Dragon is absolutely better. Is it like, Again, assuming you've got a healthy amount of characters in your discard. But if you do, Great Stone Dragon is better because it's not depleting your hand the way that Fishbone Quill is. And we're also seeing one copy of Fang Crossbow. Three cost ink of a item. Two abilities. We have Careful Aim, Exert and Pay 2. Chosen character gets minus two strength this turn. So that's another way that we can not only manipulate um, strength to give us more favorable challenges, but get more characters into Sisu, Madame Medusa, and Brawl range. Pretty mad. Um, pretty mad. And then stay back. Banish this item. Well, exert, banish this item. Banish chosen dragon character, of which, of course, um, Maleficent and Sisu are our prime... Well, and all the Sisus are prime targets as dragons in the format that can absolutely be removed from this so i absolutely love this bit of spice um i mentioned the floodborne c2 that we're running three of this is a great ability not just because it's a half uh, one-sided board white but it gets around to things like ward because you don't have to choose and of course pretty fair stat line stays out of medusa and doesn't uh doesn't survive zeus but stays out of medusa so we take it and questing for three our baby sisu that we're shifting on to is the emboldened warrior who again is a great early character especially if they are playing that flynn rider the um the if ruby yeah if the ruby amethyst player is running the the two drop flynn rider this could help you have a character to sort of stay above the range you need to two copies of bell who's going to quest really high when we're nice and ramped grandma tala for the draw maui for board control tremaine is another removal option who I do like on top of the Medusas to help you deal with things like Tamatoas. I think is one of your really prime targets for this. Um, how far I'll go and one jump ahead for the ramp. Looks really, really good and I really love this one copy of, Frank, of Fang Crossbow. Uh, get ready current, uh, older generation. The next generation, they come in. And our final two decks are both the same ink combination. We've got some Ruby Emerald. Ah, oh, let them cook. Absolutely let them cook. I, uh, this deck is 66 cards. Um, a toolbox of all sorts of stuff going on. Let's start with the non-character cards. We're running four copies of Dragon's Fire, Banished Chosen Character. Removal is so strong. Um, there's such a lot of the, there's so many characters that just gotta go straight away, like Tamatoas and Maleficents, and even things like Lady Tremaine's. Or even just cards like Diablo that I played more to the mid to late game. 
I do think four is probably high, but I, I, I don't hate seeing the dragons fire by any means. Two copies of be prepared for the board wipe. And then we're also running two copies of, of two copies of Imperial Proclamation. One cost inkable item. Whenever one of your characters challenges another character, you pay one ink less for the next character you play this turn. So this is Ruby's version of a lantern. Um, so if we get this down turn one, as the course of the game develops and we get a nice wide board, we could get some, we could cheat out some characters really early like early tremaines hydras medusas even the aladdins here so i love the tech we're also seeing three copies of hidden ink caster which i do not like i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry I, I will never like this card <laughs> two cost uninkable uh when you play this item draw a card an unexpected treasure all cards in your count in your hand count as having the inkable flourish um so if we do get this online of course it's card draw and we're gonna have an easier time inking i'm running three copies of fang four cost inkable location um two to move there six willpower two passive law gain Characters gain Ward and Evasive while here. And Ward and Evasive are really strong keywords to gain. The, the two passive law gain is not insignificant. The six will power means it is immediately removed by Maui. Um, two, the, the main problem here is the two to move there, I think, is really expensive. So I don't know how often this will be online. Um, I'd be very interested to know how often this was online. But hey, if you like Fang, by all means, let them cook. Let's go back to our characters. We've got one copy of the Duke. Duke of Weaselton, one drop, two, two. Two copies of Milo Thatch, one drop, two, two. And four copies of Sergeant Tibbs, one drop, two, two. No Floodborne targets for these, just this player playing the one drops of the characters they like, which I absolutely rate. Four copies of Ursula Deceiver to snipe those songs. Four copies of LeFou to help protect our characters. Um, I don't think there's any abilities here that we can reuse, like an exert ability. No, but we're keeping our characters safe. We've got two copies of a Lyle Tiberius Rock. I love saying that name. Three cost uninkable, two, four. Quest for one, uh, when you play this character, chosen opposing character gains a reckless, which is a great ability. Really strong into Diablo. And thanks for volunteering. Whenever one of your other characters is banished, each opponent loses one law. I really rate Lyle. Um, I know Moyen really likes Lyle. Um, yeah, really strong card. Love to see it. We've got two copies of the three drop Aladdin. When you play this character, each opponent loses a law. And four copies of the Floodborne Aladdin. Whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you gain two law. And each opponent loses two law. One of the stars of Chapter One format. So I always um, always enjoy seeing Aladdin come back into meta. Um, or at least come back into top cut deck lists and have a chance to shine. We're running four copies of Sheer Khan, Menacing Predator. Three cost inkable, three, three, quest for one, and don't insult my intelligence. Whenever one of your characters challenges another character, gain one lore. So a lot of cheap characters here. Of course, LeFou could help us re-ready a character and challenge again if we survive the challenge. If we're not surviving the challenge and we've got Rourke on the field, then we're making them lose lore. And of course, we've got some Rush here. We've got Maui. We've got Goofy. We've got Queen of Hearts here, who again goes into the challenger archetype. Whenever one of your characters challenges another character, you may draw a card, which is really nice. I'd love to see the shift target in here, um, this person. I think having that open as a shift and then an and then immediately challenge would be pretty strong. Uh, two copies of the Daring Visitor Sisu to banish characters of one strength or less. Two copies of Donald Duck Perfect Gentleman to make pl both players draw extra cards. One copy of Super Goof. We've got four copies of Prince Eric, who I really like. Four cost uninkable, two, two, quest for two. Whenever this character is banished, you may banish chosen character. I would really consider Teeth and Ambitions as an addition um, if you're going to play Prince Eric. I think there's some really nice synergy there. And especially because you're also running three copies of Hydra whenever this character is dead damage deal that much damage to chosen opposing character really strong into any deck that wants to try and you do ping damage to you like let storm rage on and grab your swords and of course even just from challenging you're doing extra damage to either the same character that challenged or you challenged or something else on the board so i would definitely recommend teeth and ambitions for this deck three tremaine three medusa so yeah a lot of spice uh, i love the challenger archetype so good to see i like these prince eric um, this Imperial Proclamation seems a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, led them to top eight. So huge congratulations to them.
And our last top eight deck list, also Emerald Ruby, but um, a lot of differences here. We are not a challenger archetype per se. Um, we are running for Super Goof and for Maui, but again, Super Goof just gets you that lore reach you need, and Maui is good for leveling board, board states. We're running a 3 2 Sisu line, three of the Daring Visitor and two of the Floodborn. Uh, four copies of Brawl to remove two strength or less characters. Three Medusa. We've got two copies of Ray, who is a 3 3 um, quest for three with evasive so outside of medusa ray can really get you a lot of value we've got four four pegasus line here three copies of tinkerbell who's also evasive and can give evasive to another character four copies of stylish surfer mini here tons of evasive we're really demanding a lot of answers from our opponent which sounds really good two copies of wildcat to help us remove items from the board like fishbone quills lucky dimes so i love this as a meta call two copies of lumiere which is going to change a lot of math um, a lot of characters suddenly now um because there's a lot that changes just with this lumiere because now anything of yours that had like so like the pet i just said that ray um will be banished to medusa not if you've got lumiere in the port on the board the same is true of pegasus it keeps Mini Mouse out of range of Daring Visitor. It keeps all the characters of two strength. It keeps them out of the Sisu Floodborn range. So I really, really love the uh, the Lumiere just for the... It just, it's just frustrating for an opponent. Like, no one's expecting it. And it just changes so much of, the, of their game plan, just that extra strength. So really good shout. We've got four grabs of Diablo here. No shift target. Not necessary. Just a really strong card nonetheless. Three copies of Flynn Rider. So we're hoping at some point in the game to have a character. You probably wouldn't play this early game because you don't really have anything that's that that has that much strength for the early game. But mid game, when you've already got down something like a Ray or a Maui or a Medusa, especially alongside Lumiere, to be fair, that might make it enough. Because um, you play the Lumiere on three, then Flynn Rider becomes a three strength character. So sometimes that's going to be enough. Uh, but mid to late late game, this Flynn Rider probably definitely put in some work. Ursa for the songs. 4-4 uh, Flynn Folk to quest aggressively and make our opponent discard when they challenge. Looks really annoying, but a lot of fun. So huge congratulations to this person. I told a lie. There is one more deck list. One more in combination. We've got some Amber Ruby. Once again, no Mufasa in this list. But an awful lot of spice. We're running a 3-4 Pluto line. So again, help us play characters uh, cheaper. And this Pluto can be a huge bodyguard. We've got a 4-3 Stitch line. And plenty of characters here that fit the adoring fans condition. To help us draw more cards. Four copies of Piglet, Pooh Pirate Captain for aggressive questing. Four Simba Bodyguard to protect our characters. We've got the Flynn Rider here. Um, which is pretty nice. Especially in like, mid to late game. If we've got things like Maui, um, Queen of Hearts. Um, Raya is up in here. And of course, we've got Maui. Now he's fish hook. Well, the fish hook won't help the Flynn Rider. But hey, we got enough characters here that this could potentially be online. Uh, we are running the four copies of the Baby Queen of Hearts here. So a shift target for our Floodborn. Three copies of the Stitch Lit Little Rocket, who I really, really like. I really, li I would like to see a Padita here. Because um, I just like the synergy of Padita and Stitch. Uh, but yeah, two cost uninkable. Three one with Rush. A little pocket rocket to... Um, three is a significant number to take out characters. Um, we'll come back to this one. We've got three copies of Sheer Khan. So we are a Challenger variant. Four copies of goofy again rush and peter super peanut powers is really good um and we're running two copies of the mulan elite archer who when you play this character if you used shift to play her she gets plus three strength this turn we have no shift target for the mulan so that is never going to be online unfortunately and during your turn, whenever this character deals damage to another character in a challenge, deal the same amount of damage to up to two, two other chosen characters. So the way that we're still going to get this online for a reasonable amount of reasonable amount of damage is with Maui's fish hook, which of course lets us give a character plus three strength. Or a character can become evasive, and of course we do this for free if Maui's on board. But yeah, this is how we're going to get Mulan up to that five strength. I would still really like to see a um, a, a shift target Mulan in here um, this person I think it would really help you get this online more often than not but you're only running two copies so we're not even all in so maybe it's not even necessary so yeah cool addition we are running one copy of Raya who shift four is irrelevant we don't have a shift target um, six cost five three quest for two whenever whenever this character challenges a damaged character she takes no damage from the challenge which is pretty cool 
I think it's probably a bit too situational. This, will, If you were looking to make a cut, I feel like this would probably be where I would start. Um, but again, five strength. It's out of Medusa range. Three copies of Sherna Bog. Again, I think this could quite comfortably be a two count. And then our non-character cards, uh, the two fish, because I said, two be repair, which I really like. And three copies of a Pirate's Life, which I bet was a lot of fun and really annoying for opponents. A card I'd really like to see in this build is Vitalisphere, the one cost um, Inkable item where you banish it and pay two, I think, to give a character plus two and um, give them rush. That would help you boost the Mulan. It get um, it allows you to rush with more characters to get value off of Sheer Khan and Queen of Hearts. And of course, the extra strength could be nice. So that would probably be an addition I'd like to see to this deck. But other than that, looks really strong, looks really powerful and led them to top eight. So huge congratulations to them. And that's it for the top eight deck lists for the Metaborn Gaming's Kids Case Tournament. Huge shout out to the organizer of the event, uh, organizers of that event for doing that. It's really great to see. Uh, and when we come to um, set championships for uh, set four, I definitely want to do because last seat, last time I did videos covering all the decks that won stitches and i definitely think i want to do a junior only version one so if you have if you know juniors that will be competing um feel free on that time I'll, I'll leave more information closer to the time but definitely look out for an announcement of how to submit those deck lists but yeah huge congratulations to the tournament organizers we're going to finish off by um going through the answers to those disney questions that we asked so question one was, in his final battle with Captain Hook, what does Peter Pan promise he will not do? The answer is fly. Question two was, in 101 Dalmatians, what colour is Perdita's collar? It was blue. Next was, according to the song Mine, 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 in Pocahontas, why can't Governor Ratcliffe dig? And the answer is, I'd help you to dig, boys, but I've got this crick in me spine. Look, he had a crick in his spine. Next up was in Mulan, what character says to Captain Shang, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty? It was the Emperor. And the last question was, which character from Oliver and Company wears a Mickey Mouse watch? The answer was Fagin. How many did you get out of five? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Lorcana. Hit that like button to show your support and we'll see you soon.